Hey, my name is James Nicholson and welcome to this YouTube channel. I'm back from France, a great week and a half away in the south of France. Very hot, but now it's very hot in the UK. Now, this video I'm going to talk to you today all about what are the best types of property to invest in. Now, you want to stick around to the end because I think you're going to be very surprised by what I tell you. We're going to go through the pros and cons and then really pick what should you be investing now, this channel is all about our investment journey together. It's about your investment journey. It's about my investment journey where I'm building my portfolio this year. And I'm building a portfolio for my two daughters. I've got Georgia, who's 21. We've just completed our first transaction in Doncaster, a renovation project, which if you check out the videos on this channel, you can see all about that. And we're completing our second deal at the moment. Now, we're also building a portfolio for my new baby, Emily, who is just one. So I want you guys to join us on this journey together to find out how it goes, all the pros and cons, all warts and all. Now, to do that, you need to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification over there. Quickly do that right now. Smash that subscribe, hit the bell, and you will find out all the good stuff. Now, there's different types of property. Now, there's two real main asset types that we invest in here. Uh, and so I'm really only gonna talk about those two main types of property because that's what I've got most experience in and the majority of you are gonna invest in this type of stuff as well. So first is flats. <laughs> I don't even know how to draw a flat, right? There's a window. Cool, so flats. Now what are the positives on investing in flats? Well, price, right? So flats are gonna be significantly cheaper in most towns than you would pay for a house, right? So price is a very, very good reason to get into flats uh, on a positive note. Uh, and so flats range if you go in Chelsea, I'm sure you can find a hat flat for 20 million quid. Uh, if you go up north, you might be able to find one for 20,000 pounds. So they vary wildly depending on where they're built, uh, but flats are relatively cheap for you to get your toe into the investment market. Now, one thing that's also a positive is that on a flat, you only have one of these. That's a roof, just in case you can't tell, right? There's only one roof on there. And so if that roof does break, then the cost is split between the four other owners or 10 or 100 or 1,000, however many people live in that block, the cost is then split, which makes it good for you guys uh, to reduce your risk significantly by reducing that cost. Now, other things you'll have is you'll have reduced costs by really any maintenance that's required there uh, is gonna be split between all of the freeholders or the leaseholders uh, all together. So that's a very, very good thing. So on the positive, uh, another positive is that flats generally rent out quite quick. They're at the end of the market where there's just quick turnaround. If someone needs a, a fairly starter property, then they'll jump into a flat and you normally rent a flat out within days if you put it onto a market pretty much anywhere in the country. So that's another good thing. Now, what's not so great about flats is possibly or likely that if you get a flat, you're gonna have something called a leasehold, right? And so you're gonna have a leasehold on that property. Now, that leasehold is for a certain amount of years. You, you, so that leasehold could be that you get it for <clears throat> when you buy uh, 99 years, or you get some leases that are 999 years. So ones that are 999 years, they're pretty safe, right? I'm certain, I'm sorry to say, it's unlikely that you're gonna to live to more than 1,000 years of age. That might change in the future, but it's very unlikely today that that is gonna be achievable. So you'll be long gone, your grandkids will be long gone uh, by the time that lease expires. But there's still, uh, the majority of the properties on the market are on shorter leases around 100 years. Now, 100 years also sounds like such a long period of time. If I buy it now, I'm 41. I'm not gonna to live to 141. So by the time the lease runs out, I won't be around. But my kids might, right? My kids could. And also, when a lease drops below 80 years, that's when lenders start getting worried. 
And so what can happen is that you might need to then extend the lease in order to be able to get a new mortgage, which you might want to do at certain times to release equity, to do all sorts of fun things with that property. And so that's a real consideration here is leases have those types of problems. Now, also, I own leasehold properties uh, and flats in the southeast. Um, what also comes along with that is if that roof gets some work done on it, maybe you don't agree. Maybe you think it can wait. Maybe they think that it's better to re-roof the whole roof rather than just fix that little problem that's there where the leak is. You have real difficulty getting your say across and control over what happens because you're just a small cog in a big wheel. And so management companies as well, it's in their interest to do bigger jobs because they make commission off of that. So you can, with a leasehold property, have big bills that come out of nowhere and you really can't win if you were to refuse to pay them. You'll forfeit, you'll forfeit your lease then and potentially lose the property. So that's a consideration. So pros, uh, cheaper to get into, very fast to rent. Uh, pros are, if you do need some work and you're happy with the work, the, the costs are split between a number of people. Cons, leaseholds are something that you also have to be concerned about, particularly shorter leases. 999 year leases are great, uh, but shorter leases, when it gets to 80 years, 70 years is really bad, 60 years is bad, that could happen in your lifetime. It can cost a lot of money to extend that lease again, right? So that's flats, lots of good stuff and some bad stuff. Let's look at houses now. Okay, what a great looking house that is. <laughs> so, oh my God, it looks terrible on the screen. <laughs> so houses, um, what's the pros and cons of houses? Now, the, the, the pros are that you own the property, you're gonna own the freehold. And so you have a lot more control over your asset then, which is a good thing, right? It's very important to have control of your destiny. You can decide if things get done or not. Um, obviously, it's a good idea to get things done because if you don't, generally more expensive work comes along after that. Uh, but you, do, you definitely have more control over it. So that's a positive, right? You're a freeholder, you control the asset, you can control work done. So next, uh, they're going to be uh, more expensive. So that's a con, right? Uh, a con of that is that it is more expensive to buy a house than it is to buy an apartment. Um, and so obviously costs will go up for stamp duty, legals, all these things will, will be more expensive with a house. So that's another consideration. Now, this wonderful roof, this perfect looking roof here, if this does break, you're the only one that owns that freehold, you're the one that's gonna pay for that. It's not gonna be your tenants, it's gonna be you, right? And so anything that goes wrong, the boiler, the roof, windows, gardens, garages, anything that goes wrong in that property, there's only one person that gets the bill and that is you as the owner of the property. You can't split that unless you've done it a joint venture or bought it with a partner. It's all coming out of your money uh, and that's obviously a consideration that you've got to have here is that that is another pr uh, downside on that. Now, also houses can rent a little slower. Um, normally flats are faster to rent, but marginally, right? So that's not going to be uh, a massive difference here. Um, other positive things on flats are you're, on houses, sorry, is you're normally going to get uh, more rent, right? So the rent is going to be significantly higher than it would be on an apartment. It's also easier to add value to a property. So you can add an extension, you can add a conservatory, you can go up into the loft. You can't really do that very easily on a flat. You can have bedrooms in flats, but it's quite hard to add massive value by extensions and all this stuff that you can do on a flat. Very, very different type of uh, property. Uh, and so that's a good thing, that the fact that you can add extra bedrooms, move bathrooms around, all of that stuff gives you much more flexibility and you're more likely to achieve better returns. Now, price raise rises uh, and increase in capital. What rises faster out of the two? Houses. Ha there are less houses uh, than we need. Flats get built a lot faster and they normally might build a hundred flats in a house, in a, in a town at a time. So they can get a lot more on there. So ha flats don't go up the capital gains as fast as a house. It's much slower to build a house, 
developers are more interested in building flats because then they're going to own freeholds and leases and uh, get all sorts of extra payments for years and years to come. Uh, and, and so that means that your house will generally go up in value faster than your flat. And that's good, right? That's a good positive thing. Uh, and so if we can do that, then uh, we can get some houses, then we're doing really, really well. Now, out of the two, which one would I pick? Um, now, initially, for transparency, when I started investing, I bought flats, right? So I have a number of flats. I've never sold a property in my life. I always keep them uh, because that's where you make real wealth is to hold the asset and get the capital appreciation. So I have a number of flats. Now, those flats have caused me some issues over periods of time. I've had leaseholder disputes uh, and uh, you generally get a lower quality of tenant uh, in those, um, but they have gone up in value. Um, houses, on the other hand, have done really well. I normally attract families in the houses, so generally, on the whole, they're better payers. Uh, they look after that property a lot more. And the capital appreciation on my houses has been significantly more percentage-wise than it has on my flats. So when I'm looking to buy, I will be looking for houses, right? And so when I'm looking to buy going forward, although I'm more buying a, a flat at the moment, which I'll be talking about very soon on this channel, I'm looking to buy houses. Now you might look at it and say, well, I live in London, it's 700 grand for a house, James. I can't afford a house. So get out of your area, right? The last house that I bought was in Doncaster. It was 60,000 pounds. There are cheaper houses up there, even today, uh, that anyone can really afford that puts their mind to it. You might think I don't have to deposit. You can borrow money for deposits. It might think that it's out of area. The estate agent manages it all for you. So it's really, really straightforward, guys, to buy houses. They are really, really important to growing your wealth. Uh, and so if you have a choice, um, I'm not saying flats are bad. I'm saying houses are better is that is my message here. So if you're looking to invest, I would say look to see if you possibly can buy a house. But if you can't and a really good deal comes up on a flat, then buy it, right? That's going to be good too. Uh, I've made lots of money on, on flats. I've made lots of money on houses. But if I had a preference, a choice, I would definitely be siding with houses. So I hope that made you think, got you some ideas. I want to know more from you guys though. Um, you might have noticed that over the last few weeks and months, I've been making videos related to your questions. So any questions that you've got on anything on property related, do post them in the comments below uh, because I will make videos around those. In fact, after this, I'm just about to shoot another video which someone recently asked in the uh, in the comments. So I will personally uh, make those videos for you guys. And if you can help me with this YouTube channel, we're trying to grow this channel to get more exposure. Um, take the finger of power, smash the like button, guys. What's, what's it going to do? It's going to help me with YouTube. It'll push it out to more eyeballs. People like you, right? That's really where we want to get this channel out to. Uh, and I, I want to ask you a question as well. I put this on the community tab on this channel is we're considering running some free live events in London. Would you come? Would you be interested in a free property training, a meetup? Um, because if there's enough people that are interested, I mean, I want to get at least 50 people there to make it worth our time. Um, but if we can get 50 people there to show up to that property training, then I will carry on doing those and, and serving you guys and helping you with your investment journey. This stuff really motivates me when you engage um, and in, interact with this channel. Now, in the link as well, in the description is a link to join our Facebook community. Come and join us uh, and learn some stuff in there. We'd love to have you on board. Now, if you didn't earlier, take that finger of power out, smash that subscribe button, Come on, you don't want to miss the next video that I'm going to make in 10 minutes. Smash that subscribe button, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. I'm James Nicholson. Stay blessed and go and check out the next video right here.